guys, my name is GPS and welcome back. I had an appointment at Chanel yesterday and I thought it would be fun if I took you guys along, especially because I know it can be still quite difficult to get to boutiques nowadays depending on where you are. So I wanted to share the experience with you and also show you all the new things that have recently launched from the pre-collection and also from the actual spring summer collection. But being the pro vlogger that I am, not. I didn't realize that I had my hand over the mic of my iPhone the entire time and also because I was wearing a mask you could not hear a word that I was saying. When I look back at the footage I couldn't hear a thing but at least it looked great so what I'm going to do is that when we jump into the vlog I'll do a voiceover. I'll try to remember what I was thinking and saying at the time so I wanted to let you know that I'll be doing a voiceover of that. And then I also wanted to do this quick intro to tell you why I actually went to Chanel in the first place. I had actually quite a few things to look at, that's why I made my appointment. So there were two jackets that I wanted to see, one from the pre-collection and then one from the spring-summer collection. And both jackets they had available. But what I found quite interesting and honestly surprising is the fact that they had a huge selection of all the new pieces as you will see in the vlog. I was pretty impressed that they had already quite a few pieces, especially more unique pieces from the different campaigns. But what you'll see is they were really, really, really low on sizes. They pretty much had one or two pieces available in each design. So for example, in most pieces, they only had a 36 and a 38, if that. Whenever they had a size 40, that was kind of a big deal. And obviously it's very rare for me to fit into a 40 in any designer, but especially Chanel. So they're really, I really tried to look at everything and try as many things that I could. First of all, for you guys to see, and also I was just kind of in the mood to pick up something new. Nothing would fit me. Everything was way too small and way too tight, but I tried my best. And, um, what was great is that one of the pieces that I liked, the black jacket that I ended up liking more than the other, which you'll see in the vlog, they found one available in size 46. I want to say in Milan, so that is being transferred and it should be here in the next couple of weeks. I'm afraid it's still going to be a little bit too small because I think I tried in that jacket of 40 or 42 and it was tiny. It was like I was wearing a toddler's jacket. So I'm a little nervous it still won't fit, but we'll have to go and see. So I tried as many things that I could. Sizing was very low, but they did have a pretty good selection of pieces. So I tried on those two jackets. I was planning on trying on a t-shirt that caught my eye from the spring summer runway show. They didn't have the t-shirt that I was looking for. They had a version of it, but it was uh, sleeveless, which for me is not an option. And then also I think the largest size they had was a 38, I think. So I tried it on, my head wouldn't even fit through the whole of the t-shirt. So I just kind of put it in front of me and showed you guys what it looked like. And then, oh, most importantly, I went to get a new pair of shoes because I have a few pair of Chanel sneakers, but at this point, all of them are falling apart. Rightfully so, because I'm a creature of habit when it comes to sneakers and shoes. When I find a comfortable pair of shoes, I wear them until they fall apart. So they are falling apart. And uh, I wanted to buy a new pair. They had only, I think, a couple of things available in my size. Most of them were high tops and I don't do high tops. So I ended up finding a new pair of shoes that I really liked, which you'll see in the vlog, which is getting ordered for me in my size. Also should be here in the next couple of weeks. So you'll see it in the vlog and then also whenever it arrives, obviously I'll unbox it for you guys if you're interested. And then, what else did I want to tell you? Oh yeah, I actually wore a pair of Chanel sneakers to the store, which are from the Chanel Ferrell collaboration. And I wore them on purpose because they are quite dirty at this point. And I've been meaning to ask uh, Chanel if there's anything that they think I could do to clean them. They told me that there is really nothing that they think I can do because it's all hand painted. So as soon as I touch it with any sort of like detergent or cleaning solution, the painting will most likely come off or fade. So they said that they cannot do anything with it. I was kind of hoping that they would say, just leave it with us, we'll send it to Paris and they'll see what they can do with it. Obviously I expected to pay for that service, but they didn't offer. So they said I could take it to a laundry place, 
which they said they might say yes, they might say no. They apparently had worked with them in the past on some Deville bags to get them cleaned. So I'll go and try if they say I can't do it there because I would have to do that my own risk. Chanel is not responsible for it, which obviously makes perfect sense. I'll probably wait until I'm back in New York and I'll take them to the leather spa. I've never taken anything to the leather spa that they couldn't fix for me. So I might just wait and do that there. And then what else was I going to tell you? Oh, I also took my black blazer that I unboxed recently, maybe a couple of months ago, has it been that long? A while ago that I unboxed. And in case you haven't seen that unboxing, I'll link that up here. I took that blazer to Chanel, the tailor came, she looked at it, she just pulled and tucked in a couple of pieces and it looked so much better. We basically did everything that I discussed in that video. She agreed with um, everything that I wanted to do with it. She said it's going to take about three weeks to a month until she gets to it because she has to prioritize all the new things that she's working on. But um, they said that they can do it. It will probably cost me something because when they were pinning the piece to make sure they know exactly what I want to get tweaked, they, they asked me if I bought it from the boutique. I obviously said no because I didn't. So they said that in that case, there might be a small alteration fee. They didn't tell me how much and I didn't even, they basically didn't say that there will be, they just said that there might be. So I guess they'll let me know whenever I pick it up. So that is also happening. And then I'm thinking if there was anything else I wanted to tell you. No, I just pretty much wanted to tell you that even though they had surprisingly quite a few pieces available from the new collections, they were very, very slim on sizing. So I wanted to let you know that in case you want to buy Chanel, make sure you keep that in mind and you get on if you want to get something in a larger size, get it ordered or ask your person at Chanel to keep an eye out for them for you because they really didn't have too much of it. So yeah, I wanted to let you know that. And I almost forgot to tell you that at the end, we also looked at some bags. At the very end of my appointment, they pulled this bag out, which is from the spring summer collection. And it is the bag of the season. It's this season's exceptional piece. And I've seen a lot of beautiful bags in my life. I don't think I've ever seen, well, I'm not quite sure about that, but it has to be one of the most magnificent bags I've ever seen. Let's just put it that way. It was absolutely breathtaking. So if you are a Chanel connoisseur or a Chanel lover or collector and you want to see something beautiful, you want to stay tuned until the end of the video because it was honestly quite the piece to see. It was never, it's never been touched. It was brand new. And when we were playing around with it, the person I worked with at Chanel was like, actually, let me go and see how many of these we have available worldwide. So she actually went through the system and counted and they had 12 of them available yesterday. They, I don't know if they still have any of them left by the time you're watching it, but if they do, I would definitely get on it because it is beautiful. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the vlog. So I started my shopping excursion by looking at ready to wear because obviously that was the main reason I went to Chanel. And I was kind of hoping I would find a sweater as well as a jacket. And they did have quite a few cool designs, but nothing that particularly piqued my interest. They had this one shape that was kind of cool, but the iridescent polka dots and the floral double C were not quite my aesthetic. This section was dedicated to the latest spring summer pieces and I was actually quite surprised how many new sort of more intricate pieces they had from the runway show. So this fluffy jacket was honestly a true showstopper and as you'll see the number five is a reoccurring element obviously for Chanel all the time but especially this season. And then they had two incredibly soft divine leather pieces in lambskin. So they had a skirt that spelled out Chanel and then they also had the matching jacket, which I'm pretty sure they showed the shorter version of on the runway. I love the skirt, it was absolutely stunning. The jacket, I feel like the combination of the silver and black is a little bit too disco. This piece was also from the latest spring summer collection. As you can see, it also has the number five details. And I was asked if I wanted to try this, but I 
pretty much immediately turned it down even though looking back at it on the screen it looks pretty cool so maybe i'll give it a try next time i'm in the boutique and then this is the coat version of the blazer that i went to see the coat is nice it wasn't quite what i was looking for but if you're looking for a new coat to add to your collection it is a beautiful piece I discovered these two tote bags that were on display and I honestly had never seen them before but they had this really cool almost sort of vintagey look to them in the best way possible. They almost looked like those really popular tote bags that Chanel used to make back in the 90s and maybe even 80s. I was all for this retro look, they looked so beautiful. And then this is the blazer that we came to see which I believe they gave me a Ford to try on and because of the cut and the structure of the blazer it actually wasn't too bad when it came to the fit because it had more of a balloon shape to it, it actually fit me quite well. But what I didn't like about it was these oversized collars and cufflinks. I even like the fact that it had a little bit of sheen to it even though it's not usually my aesthetic. These wide contrasting details were just too old school, they look like something a vintage vampire would have worn. And for $10,000 you want to make sure that if you buy a jacket or a blazer you're going to love it and it's not something that you'll just, you know, get used to. I also saw these two Deville bags in this mini size which again I had never seen before so I discovered quite a few new bags and then this denim flap with the Coco detail is something that Chanel has had out for over a year at this point, I think it launched at the beginning of 2020. We have some Chanel 19s here in case you love the style. I don't mind it, it's not my favorite. This on the other hand was honestly stunning. I have seen this bag in pictures so many times before but this was my really my first time seeing it in person. And I think this is a prime example of Chanel taking inspiration from their heritage and of their most classic designs but putting a twist on them and making them fresh and exciting. It's basically a flat bag that has this really cool laser cut detail and it comes with a removable pouch. Don't worry, I didn't leave the bag like that. I'll go back and fix it in a second. But this is another bag that, again, I came across for the first time and I probably would have never looked at it if it wasn't for me filming for you guys. Because this is a style that didn't look great on the shelf, but as soon as I put it on and started playing around with it, it really came into its own. It was such an interesting shape and style that I'm so glad I tried on. For a second I was even like, do I need this? I considered getting it for a brief second, but unfortunately I just have to come to terms with the fact that when it comes to bags, I'm not a Chanel kind of guy. But I love this bag, it was so fun, it was so cool. It had a longer chain as well as a cutout in the middle which made it almost seem like a doctor's bag or an old school briefcase. I love this. If you're looking for a fun new style, I would highly recommend that you check this out. And as I told you, I just had to come back to this white Chanel bag. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was so fresh cool, interesting and different from everything I've seen from Chanel before. It comes with this removable pouch that you can either use on its own or you can put it in the bag. I just loved it. I can absolutely see people wearing it in the summer. I think it would be just such a standout piece. And I think it's quite difficult to make a white bag look classy. It's one of those pieces that can go really tacky really fast, but they nailed it with this design. I love that they even kept the quilting detail which is something that Chanel is so well known for but instead of doing it with stitching as they normally would they 
featured this really pretty laser cutout. And because there are actual chunks of leather missing, means that this bag is so much lighter than any Chanel bag that I've ever tried. I also tried this double C knit piece from the 21P collection. And I think at this point, these double C sweaters have become a classic we can expect to see. These come back every season in some shape or form, but surprisingly this season I felt that the fit was much more tapered than it was in previous seasons. Obviously as you can see the one that I tried on was on my size, it was way too small, but it was also quite a bit more tapered than usual. I liked the sweater, I personally didn't have a problem with the fact that it was tapered, obviously if it was in my size it would have looked much better. But these sort of lace details around the collar and the sleeves just gave it some sort of crochet old lady-like look, which I wasn't the biggest fan of. But in case you're interested, these are all the details you need to know. And this is the official piece that we came for. This is the jacket from the 21 P campaign that piqued my interest. I've been wanting to try on this jacket for so long. As you can see, it is tiny. I was given this in a size, I believe 42, which as you can see is way too small. Much smaller than any other jacket would be in size 42 because this cut is really, really tapered and quite a bit more cropped than a regular jacket. So we ended up ordering it in a size 46 and fingers crossed it will fit as it is or even if it doesn't hopefully it's large enough that Chanel can make it work for me. Now what's interesting about this jacket is they say that this is a tweed jacket but it doesn't feel or look like a regular tweed jacket. If you have a closer look at the fabric it is quite a bit more rough than wool tweed. It almost looks like some sort of rough raffia or some sort of a straw fabric. It is quite interesting and it's definitely very summery and I love the button details. The buttons are quite simple. I love the fact that the fabric doesn't have too much to it. It just has the slightest bit of sheen to give it some more dimension. So let's hope 46 will fit me when it comes in. And the last clothing piece I tried that caught my eye on the runway was this t-shirt. As I mentioned, they didn't have the one with the sleeves that I originally wanted. They only had the sleeveless version, which is not something that I would consider. And even if they had the ones with the sleeve, I still would not have been able to buy it because looking at this and trying it on in 38, it was so tiny that I ha have no doubt that even if I got the largest size, it wouldn't fit because it is such a tapered shape, which if you don't like an oversized t-shirt, if you like one that is a little bit more form-fitting, you love this, but there is just no way that it would fit me. Chanel is so beloved for their small leather goods, but it's one thing that I never quite got into from the brand. But I was shown this card case, which I thought was so cool. It comes with this chain detail and a hook that I guess you're supposed to hook onto a necklace or your jeans, but I ended up hooking it onto my bag as a back charm, which looked really fun. And then I also looked at a few brooches for my new Chanel jacket. I looked at this cross, but it didn't look great. It was a little bit too overwhelming and there really wasn't anything else in the current collection that I quite liked. And I also wanted to see a couple of wallet on the chain bags as a gift for my sister-in-law. But these are so expensive at this point that I would just much rather buy her a small flap than a bag that, yes, it kind of looks like a bag, but it's not quite a bag if you know what I mean. There was a bucket bag featuring the same laser cutout as the previous bag that I showed you guys in white. 
And then I saw more of the mini reveal bags, which I had honestly never seen before. I don't know what to think about these. The ones that I showed you previously I quite like, but the ones in this plasticky neon fabric looks pretty cheap, I have to be honest. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, another thing that I really wanted to have a look at were Chanel sneakers. I love their sneakers. Unfortunately, they didn't have anything in my size, but I found this pair, which goes up to quite large sizes. And this is actually the exact same shape as the Pharrell shoes that I was wearing that day. So they ended up ordering this for me in a larger size. And the pièce de résistance, the highlight of my visit, was seeing this exquisite bag from Chanel. This is their exceptional piece of the season, which is the flat bag made of metal. It comes in two different sizes, and this was the smaller one, which is the so-called evening bag size. When they pulled this out for me, it had never been touched, it had never been looked at by anyone else, and it was absolutely jaw-dropping. I've seen a lot of incredible bags, but this was just beyond. I do have a soft spot for Chanel's exceptional pieces. Most of them I find to be a waste of money, but this was so incredibly well made that I can absolutely see why a Chanel lover would go crazy for it. But I have to be honest, the price is just as crazy as the bag is. It is 16,000 euros and there are currently 12 of them available or at least they had 12 of them available worldwide when I was looking at them. I have no idea what the situation currently is, but if you want to add a one-of-a-kind piece to your collection, I mean, you don't have to look any further. It is absolutely breathtaking, but it is surprisingly similar to the white bag I was obsessing over earlier. It features the same cutout details, it features the same little pouch accessory, Obviously, the main difference being that the white bag is made of leather, whereas this one is made of fully metal. But there is about a 12,000 euro difference between the two. So if you only care about the aesthetic and the look, I think the leather version is quite special in its own right. And this is it guys. This completes today's Come Shopping With Me at Chanel video. I hope you guys enjoyed this and if you'd like me to make more videos like this, then be sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here and I hope to see you in the next one.